Some of you might be thankful there aren't as many bees buzzing around these days. But reporter Aaron Franklin shows us why few bees means big problems. Swarms of honeybees are disappearing, and honeybee farmers across the country are asking themselves, where have all the workers gone? I looked at my hives, and they were doing pretty good. I came back the latter part of January, and three of those hives completely disappeared. And Floyd Watkins isn't alone. Beekeeper C.E. Harris says he also struggles with keeping his bees close to the hive. I've lost as many as half of my bees uh, in the winter, get them rebuilt next uh, spring and summer, and then lose half of them again. There are half as many domestic honeybees in the U.S. today as there were 50 years ago, and empty hives like this one are becoming more common. Nearly half the states are suffering bee losses. California and North Carolina are the hardest hit. The decline might be a result of years of pesticide use. Pesticides travel airborne or are brought into the hive by the honeybees themselves. If they're toxic, it could wipe out an entire colony. Parasites also contribute to the problem. The varroa mite is one of the biggest threats to bees. Mites like these caused this bee to lose its wings. The bee's immune system apparently isn't all that great. That's why we're having problems keeping them alive. Why is this worrisome? Because without honeybees, we'll lose crops like kiwis and apples, and no bees means no honey. California is going to need more bees in February to pollinate almonds than uh, they have in the country right now. And that means that beekeepers and consumers like you will start to feel the sting. In Knott's Island, I'm Erin Franklin, Carolina Week. Researchers are trying to breed honeybees that are resistant to pesticides and mites, but there's little doubt that these prodigious pollinators will be in short supply until then. A recent study shows that women who smoke are more prone to acne than non-smokers. Researchers for the British Journal of Dermatology discovered that out of 1,000 women, 42% of the smokers had acne, compared to only 10% of the non-smokers. A type of non-inflammatory acne was common among smokers, and researchers say recognizing this type of acne will help identify the effects of tobacco on the skin. Until then, putting out that cigarette is the best way to beat health problems. They say beauty is pain, and high heels certainly qualify. Medical experts say that in addition to being uncomfortable, high heels can cause a lifetime of serious health problems. The American Podiatric Medical Association says heels more than two inches high can actually deform feet and legs. Women's feet aren't like Barbies. They're flatter and are meant to distribute weight evenly. Big pumps force feet into an unnatural position that might shorten the Achilles tendon and cause foot pain. To minimize damage from high heels, try wearing flats for most of the day and avoid high heels that are too tight. Or try chunkier heels that shorten and are only two inches tall. Do you know which battle brought the American Revolution to an end? If you don't, you're not alone. Researchers at the University of Connecticut conducted a study to test college students' knowledge of U.S. history. UNC, Duke, and Pfeiffer University were among the 50 schools to take part. 14,000 freshmen and seniors participated. The study included questions about history, government, and international relations. Placing ninth overall, Duke led the three North Carolina universities with an average score of 63 percent. UNC came in 19th with an average of 58 percent. And Pfeiffer brought up the tail end with 44 percent, placing 40th overall. So do these UNC students know which battle ended the American Revolution? Gettysburg, but I don't know anything about history, so... Yorktown. It's Yorktown. It's Yorktown. 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 And he's right. The correct answer is the Battle of Yorktown. Harvard placed number one overall with an average grade of 70%. If you want to test your wits, you can visit our website and take the quiz, www.carolinaweek.org. If you're looking for some medieval fun, grab the kids, wind up your imagination, and head over to Kid Zoo. There's adventure and lots of excitement popping up at the Children's Museum. The new exhibit, The Amazing Castle, features hands-on learning experience for kids and adults. Visitors can cook up Storm in the Great Hall, hone their woodworking skills, and even put on a royal puppet show. The exhibit is designed to teach visitors about the importance of each role in a community. Last week we told you about our friend Peggy Sue, and we're pleased to tell you she's found a new home. Now for this week's pet. 
Meet Callie, a 10-month-old pit bull. She might be young and playful, but this puppy is already well-trained. She's polite and always seems to please. She came to the shelter a few weeks ago, and now she's looking for a home that will give her lots of love and attention. For more information about how you can adopt Callie or any of the other animals at the shelter, visit our website at carolinaweek.org. And now we're joined by weathercaster Johnny O. Hi, Johnny. You know, last week when I was planning for flag football, I had to pack tights and a long sleeve shirt, and now I'm running in shorts and a t-shirt. What is up with this weather change? Well, I wish that I could tell you in a simple answer, but it's actually not that simple. Yeah, you'd think that the start of fall means cooler weather. But people here are wearing shorts and spending time in the sun. Will you need to bring out the fall clothes anytime for classes? I'll let you know next.